Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Civil Engineering Academy. My name's Cody. Let's go ahead and get started. So today we have a hydraulics hydrology problem, and in particular, we're going to be solving for the pressure at a point. Uh, so here's what the question says. Uh, the pipe below begins at 2 inches in diameter, then expands to 3 inches in diameter just after point C. Uh, which of the following most closely resembles the pressure at point C? Uh, and then we see our four options there. So um, the trick to this question is to identify what equation is going to be best for us, and in this case, it's going to be Bernoulli's. We can use uh, we we can use the the velocities, we can use the areas, um, we can use our elevations, uh, we can use a lot of things to our advantage with the Bernoulli's equation. So that's what we're going to use for this one. Um, so if you're looking for the Bernoulli's equation, it's going to be in the PE on page 307. And then for the FE, uh, you're going to be in page 181. So there's that. Uh, and then, so here's what the Bernoulli's equation says. Uh, the pressure over gamma uh, plus the velocity at 1 uh, squared over 2G plus your elevation at uh, point 1 is equal to the pressure over gamma plus the velocity squared over 2G uh, plus your elevation. Okay, so that's that. So we can pick uh, a point and compare them. So we're gonna pick, in this case, A and C. And the reason why we pick A in this instance is because it's open to the atmosphere. So we know the pressure is equal to, uh, we know the pressure is equal to zero. And we also know the velocity is equal to zero because it's in a massive uh, reservoir. Uh, it's open to the atmosphere and it just slowly goes down. There's basically no velocity. Uh, and so typically you can consider that as zero. So the pressure at A over gamma, I'm going to go ahead and write this guy out. Uh, the velocity at A squared over 2G uh, plus the elevation of A. You get to pick your datum. And so I'm going to pick my datum right here. This is going to be where I uh, set my zero location my zero and elevation so I'm gonna go Z equals zero just so you guys can see that uh, and so our elevation at A is actually gonna be two feet so in this case we're gonna use C for our second one so this is PC over gamma plus our velocity at C squared over 2g and then we have our uh, plus our elevation at C well what is C at well if you look here kinda gives us something right here it gives us a good hint and so that's going to be three, three feet. All right, so we know this guy goes to zero. We know this guy goes to zero. Uh, we know that's two, and we don't know the pressure yet. We don't know the velocity, but we do know the elevation. So to simplify this guy out, we end up with two feet is equal to the pressure at C uh, over gamma plus your VC squared over 2G uh, plus three feet. So uh, we're, we're solving for the pressure at C. We know our specific weight of, uh, of, um, of water, okay? And it doesn't include it in the problem, but we can assume that it's water. They may not give you a fluid. Uh, sometimes they won't. So just assume water. Um, so that's what we're gonna do here. Uh, gravity is gonna be 32.2 feet per second squared because we're in US units. Uh, and we don't know our velocity. Well. Uh, one thing that we can do to get our velocity at C is use another point. And so that's what we're going to do here. We're going to do, um, we're going to do a spot where both our pressures equal out, uh, to zero. So look, D is also open to the atmosphere. So this guy, his pressure is going to be zero, but he's actually going to have a velocity. And so we're going to use that to our advantage. We, we have a known elevation at D. Um, so that's what we're going to do here. So we're going to go pressure at A over gamma uh, plus the velocity at A squared over uh, 2G. And the elevation, remember that is 2 feet. Um, and then we're going to equals that to the pressure at D. Uh, and that's going to be over gamma. And then we have our velocity at D squared over 2G. Uh, and then we have our elevation. Well, our elevation is actually half a foot below our datum. And so this is going to be a negative 0.5. Um, okay, so 
canceling out our pressures because we know that's zero, that's zero, and this is zero. Uh, you end up with two equals VD squared over 2G. Um, and this guy is going to be minus 0 0.5. So whenever you solve for our VD, uh, you should end up with 12.69 feet per second. Um, and so we can use that to our advantage. We just found uh, a, a velocity, but notice that our areas are different between D and C. And so then our flow rate is constant, but our area changes. And so therefore our velocity is going to change. So that's why we can't use this in place of our, uh, in place of our velocity at C because it's going to be different. However, we do know that the flow rate is going to be consistent. Uh, because of this equation, Q equals VA. Um, and so our flow rate is going to remain constant throughout this entire process. So we're going to find uh, the flow rate. And so here we go. Uh, our flow rate is equal to that. 12.69 um, feet per second. And we're going to multiply that by our area, our cross-sectional area at point D. Um, so we know it's three inches, uh, three inches in diameter. So we're going to use pi d squared because it's easier that way. Three inches uh, converted over to feet, divided by twelve. Pi d squared over four. And so our q. Let me scroll down here. Our q ends up being zero point six two cubic feet per second. So good deal. We know that our uh, Q is constant, and so in that case, we can solve for our velocity at C using our area at C. And so we have 0 0.62 cubic feet per second uh, is equal to the velocity at C. And we understand that the diameter at C is 2, 2 inches. It said that in the problem. Divide that by 12. Uh, square, square that guy, put it over 4, so pi d squared again. Uh, and so whenever you solve for VC, you should end up with 28.42. So uh, we got some water going through there, feet per second. Uh, and then let's see, let's see. So now we have our unknown. We have our unknown in our equation. Uh, you may remember it from up here. Um, we were only solving for, we were only needing this guy. And so now we have it. So I'm going to rewrite so rewriting, uh, we have 2 equals, because remember our pressure and velocity uh, canceled out. 2 feet is equal to the pressure of C over gamma uh, plus our velocity at C, which is now 28.42 feet per second over 2G. And we have our, um, our elevation of 3 feet. And so going off of that, uh, we understand that 2 feet is equal to our pressure at C. Our specific weight of our water is 62.4 uh, pounds per cubic foot. And this guy is going to be plus 28.42 uh, feet per second. And then we're going to divide that by 2 times G, which is 32.2 feet per second squared and we're going to add three feet so whenever you solve for the pressure at C you should end up with negative 89.94 uh, pounds per square foot and they may offer this in units of PSI uh, th so they'll say negative you know 90 PSI and you may just not even look at your units and circle it well it's wrong um, because our answers are actually in PSI. We see that right here. Um, so we need to convert it over to PSI. So the way that we do that is we divide it by 144. And so this guy ends up, because there's 12 inches in a foot, square feet. Um, so this guy ends up being negative 0 0.62 PSI. That is a 6. And so whenever we look up here at our top, 0.62 boom let's see here it's d so i hope this video helps and we'll catch you next time